Today my title is, Young Man, Get Up. My key verse is 14b. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, uh, speak to us through your holy word and Holy Spirit, your word of life. Clothe me in your grace to serve your word. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In this world, there are many discouraging and sad events constantly happening, such as violence and war. There are also sad events in our lives and the lives of our loved ones. Disease, serious accidents, failures, broken relationships, and so on. Things often don't turn out the way we had hoped. So how do we respond? Perhaps we get angry or sad or fatalistic. Perhaps we feel hopeless. In today's Bible story, we see that Jesus encountered a sad situation. It was a funeral procession, the funeral of an only son of a widow. This woman experienced sorrow. Then she experienced even deeper sorrow when her only son died. Jesus took away her sorrow and restored her joy of living. Can Jesus help us in our sorrows and difficulties? Yes, he can. This is the faithful testimony of Scripture. This is also the repeated human testimony of those who have trusted in Jesus and those who continue to trust in Jesus. Today, we want to hear and meditate on two commands of Jesus in this passage. Don't cry and get up. May Jesus' words of life give you victory over sorrow and over the sting of death. First, don't cry. Don't cry. Jesus entered a town together with his disciples and a large crowd that was with him. The town was called Nain, a town in Galilee, not far from Nazareth. To hang out with Jesus must have been so exciting. Jesus was healing diseases, driving evil spirits out of people, and proclaiming the victory and the freedom of God's kingdom. Jesus' group was full of life, hope, and high expectations. However, Jesus' group was met by a very different group when they arrived in Nain. As Jesus approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. As we all know, death is a normal part of living in this world. We all have an appointment with death one day. Whether you accept it or not, you do. So to see a funeral procession is not an unusual thing to see. In Chicago, we are sometimes interrupted in traffic by a long train of cars with their headlights on and a bright orange banner on their windshield with black letters that read funeral. There are so many funeral homes and cemeteries throughout Chicago. Of course, at funerals, we always expect to see people crying, in particular, those who are closest to the departed one. A few months ago, I was greatly surprised when I attended the funeral of the father of two shepherds from Triton UBF, Nanso and Casey Ukeka. What surprised me most was when their mother, who had just lost her husband, stepped up to the podium as the last one to speak. She shouted loudly and joyfully as her first words, Praise the Lord! Wow! I never saw a widow, Praise the Lord! like that. She had great faith, great hope in the resurrection of Jesus. And she surprised and inspired us all. Women of God, stand up and praise the Lord. A bunch of Nigerian, what she was Nigerian, a bunch of Nigerian women stood up praising the Lord. They, they, knew, they knew what to do. 
That was so inspiring. As I said, funerals usually involve many tears and wailing. Luke tells us two details that make this funeral even more sorrowful than usual. The dead young man being carried out was the only son of his mother. Also, she was a widow, which meant her husband had died and she had not remarried. We don't know how she lost her husband. Assuming she had a loving husband, she had lost her husband's love and support. Hopefully, he had been her best friend. Hopefully, if you're married, you are your spouse's best friend. That's natural and normal. But she lost her best friend when her husband died. But she still had her only son after her husband passed. Her only son must have been her joy of life who gave her strength to live. You are just like your father. I see your father in you. Probably her only son helped support her with his labor power. Her only son was the love of her life. But he died. We don't know how he died. The Bible doesn't tell us. Perhaps he got some disease like tuberculosis or polio. Today, these diseases are easily treated or have been nearly eliminated through vaccines, such as polio. Perhaps he got an infection, but they didn't have antibiotics. They did not have access to today's advances in medicine, such as the antibiotics. We also don't know how old her son was when he died. We only know that